This is a custom watch case for a Casio F91W watch. We are going to at least start the process of making this today. We will be machining it out of aluminum, and at very least we're going to do the first couple operations here. They will all be done on the back part of the watch. So we have to make this big pocket here. We need to profile it. Uh, we need to start shaping these little nubbins, and we'll be drilling a couple of very small holes and chamfering the whole thing. Our cam looks like this. We're going to start off with a huge adaptive that'll just get rid of most of the material, but doesn't quite go down, so it's not hitting our fixture there. We'll do a second adaptive that kind of goes and roughs out more of the material. Then we'll move to the inside of the pocket. And lastly, with this tool, we are going to bore out a hole through the stock here that we can use to fixture it later. We're then going to change to a smaller end mill, a 1 8 inch end mill. The other end mill was a 3 16 And we're going to clear out some remaining material there. And then stop, and we're going to add a screw into this hole and remove our Mighty Bite cam clamps here. Uh, for the rest of this operation, the work holding will be done by that one screw. Then we're going to continue with the 1 8 inch end mill to do a little bit more of a final material removal here before we move on to an even smaller 1 16th end mill. And you can see up here, those tool paths go through this Mighty Bite uh, clamp. And that's why we have to remove it, is so that we can remove all this material here without any collisions. We'll be fine down here. Then we are going to do our little O-ring slot here. Just a couple passes with a 1 32nd end mill. Drill our holes. And then lastly, we'll do this big long finishing op uh, with a 1 8 inch ball mill. That's going to crisscross across the entire part and give us the nice curves and uh, do those chamfers and hopefully make this look really nice for us. So this is what my fixture and stock looks like. This is 3 8 inch aluminum. This is a custom tombstone that I made for the Pocket NC. It's all aluminum as well, and it's on a laser cut and then machined faceplate here. First thing I need to do is put in my tool and touch it off. Gonna turn on the air blast. Now we hit go. So I just noticed something. I have to stop it here. There's screws on the bottom of this fixture here that are not in my model, and there's some pretty tight clearances between the bottom of this uh, collet there and my fixture here. So I need to go through and make sure that in fusion that these screws are not going to hit anything. All right, looking at that looking at that preview, I don't think there's any danger of the screws being hit by the tool or the collet.
All right, op one. It no, not op one is done. The t the first tool for op one is done, which is the majority of the roughing. So let's take a look at that. We've actually got some surprisingly good finishes on here. I have made parts that have looked much worse. The next tool is a 1 8 inch 3 flute OSG um, high helix, just regular square end mill. All right, so this one, it's going to do the inside of this pocket and then pause for me. And I'll put the screw in there and remove this clamp and then it'll finish doing the outside, being held by that screw. I just learned something. Apparently, a uh, pause on this machine with the current setup, and maybe there's something that could change. The spindle is still running and in a bad place for me to do the screw. So I'm gonna have to stop this, move the spindle back, turn it off, put the screw in, and then resume the code from where it was. I don't. I guess I was expecting it to go home uh, before it paused, but now I know. So, stop. Z back. All right, spindle's out of the way. Screw. Oh, it would have been a lot smarter. Look at this. B e axis. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, my screw's too long. It doesn't tighten down all the way. Uh, I think I'm going to have to grind off this screw because I don't have a shorter one. All right, take two, shorter screw. There we go, that's better. So this is something I didn't see coming. I can't get the mighty bite out of the way um, because I can't unscrew it. it. When I go all the way around, it hits again the, against the material again. So it's stuck. I don't know what to do about this. I don't want to remove the material and then put it back in with the screw because then I would lose my positioning because the screw is not precise enough to relocate the material. Hmm. I have figured out how I'm going to solve this. I'm not going to solve it. I'm just going to leave it. It doesn't go very deep into the Mighty Bite. Just a little bit, maybe 20, 30 thou down. And that's not going to compromise any of my work holding. It's just going to take off the corner. Uh, it shouldn't break the tool either because it's expecting there to be material there, even though there's not. It just doesn't know where the stock is. Um... And after today, there won't even be any extra material there for it to catch on. So my plan is to do nothing, and I think it'll be perfectly fine. It definitely doesn't affect it for this first tool anyway, uh, for the 1 8 inch tool. It's only for the 1 16 inch tool where it will, where it'll hit it. So, screwing it down, hitting go. Uh -huh. 
That was pretty quick, going to the 116th end mill next. This is actually one of the older tools I have. It's a 116th inch four flute. I have a new one of these on the way, uh, one that's better suited for aluminum and what I'm doing here, uh, but it's not here yet, so this is what I'm using. Well, the 16th inch end mill is still there, so that's a good sign. Up next, we may have what is the scariest tool of all time. This is a long reach 132nd Harvey 3 flute end mill. And I'm using this to make the O ring, the O ring groove. I'm using this to make the O ring groove slot. I do have a not super long reach, 132nd inch end mill on the way, but I do not have it yet, so I'm just gonna really hope I don't break this. I'm tempted to skip this operation altogether so that, uh, well, so that I don't break the tool, because I wouldn't buy another one of these if I broke it, because it's such a weird tool. But it's the kind of tool that can come in handy and save you, save you in the future. That is a small tool. It feels like a miracle every time I finish a tool path with that stupid tool. The slot actually looks pretty good though. Even just taking the 132nd end mill out of the, the machine is scary. I'm probably more likely to break it there than I am actually machining. Oh no, my air blast came loose. 
That's not good. The next tool is a Harvey Tools 1 8 inch ball, ball nose end mill. Uh, this one happens to be a 45 degree helix. I don't think it matters at all in this part because I'm just cutting with the, uh, the ball. Mm -hmm. 